What is going on everyone? Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters, tackling a topic that I, uh, I've wanted to tackle for a long time, but because I wouldn't consider myself a competitive player, nor a financial expert, uh, it's been hard to quantify my thoughts or qualify my thoughts about pre-ordering Magic the Gathering cards. So I teamed up with a friend of mine, Kevin, who happened to order, uh, or own a local game store, as well as run a very interesting YouTube channel. Uh, it's one of the few that I have that I make time to watch consistently, because every time I watch one of his videos, I get taken to school on a topic uh, that's interesting to me. So he does a lot of rogue brews, and he does a market analysis on Mondays that is very informative. And so I figured why not give him a chance to explain much more intelligently to all of you uh, the his thoughts on whether or not you should pre-order cards. And I look forward to your conversation in the, in the comment section down below. Now be nice to him. Uh, I put him under a lot of stress to do this video. And uh, he doesn't normally script his videos and uh, usually get to see a smiling face. So uh, <laughs> be nice to Kevin and I'll try to uh, bring more people I consider very intelligent on separate topics when I think they need to be covered here on the channel. Let's see what Kevin has to say. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. There are a number of reasons that I don't pre-order cards, especially as a form of investment. The main reason is simple supply and demand. Before a set is released, there is a already huge demand for cards. This is especially true for commander staples, which causes an inaccurate representation, or overinflated, sense of supply versus demand. Once the commander players get their one-ofs, demand for these narrow or niche cards will completely crash. The same is true for competitive cards. At first there will be a hype about a card creating a new archetype or fitting into an existing deck, but if that card fails to prove results immediately, which most inevitably do, its price will freefall. I want to emphasize this point. The vast majority of cards will greatly decrease in price compared to their pre-sale value. There are mass box openers like Rudy from Alpha Investments that understand this. In fact, for many of them, the entire lifespan of opening and selling a particular set only occurs during the weeks of pre-orders. Once the set is officially released, they wipe their hands and are done with the box openings because it is no longer profitable. As a rule of thumb, set values generally decrease from their pre-sale hype about 5-10% to per week and continue to fall until we come to a net neutral estimated value of a box, meaning that opening a box will no longer yield a profit. It is important to understand that if one card spikes up in price, this inevitably means another card or group of cards must fall. Because an imprint set can only hold a finite value, otherwise box openers will continue to open box after box until it flattens out. Of course, there will be sleepers and exceptions to the rule. However, I still think this isn't a sustainable investment strategy. Here are a few reasons why. Number one, even the pros have trouble predicting winners and losers. Look at Thing in the Ice, which I actually still think the pros were right about. It sees a lot of play in both standard and modern and is a very powerful card. So powerful that it pre-sold for $20. However, it was slow out of the gate, didn't post any early top finishes, and crashed all the way down to $5. Aetherworks Marvel is another example of this. It had a ton of hype during spoiler season, was even the most played deck at the Pro Tour, and continues to be one of the most played decks throughout the Kaladesh Standard season. However, it hasn't come close to its pre-sale price of $15. Of course, there are the Smuggler's Copters and the Jace Fringe Prodigies that make pre-orders seem tempting, and if you can identify one of these cards, then by all means pull the trigger. But the odds are not good when so many pros are hyping literally everything, so investing in multiple cards during pre-order season is setting yourself up for failure, as most of these cards are falling in price, will offset the huge gains of the ones that hit. Number 2. You usually still have a window to invest in sleeper cards before they hit the spotlight. It is a much better strategy to stay glued to the Pro Tour coverage, paying attention to cards that performed well on camera, as well as the top performing decks at the end of day 3. As a rule of thumb, the less risk, the better. I like investing in no-brainer scenarios. There are 100% identifiable and consistent market trends in Magic the Gathering. This includes top 8 finishes, how much camera time they receive, deck tech spotlight at Pro Tours, and so forth. These will lead to purchases and are much easier to predict than pre-sale speculation. A few of my personal favorite strategies are investing in cards right after the height of their draft season, where the supply is the greatest, and then selling them a few blocks later when demand from newer players entering the game re-spikes their value. 
You can see this clear trend with cards like Gideon, a card that has consistently been popular choice throughout its standard lifespan. Number three, the window to sell cards is even slimmer. If one of your pre-order cards hits it big, you better sell it as soon as possible. The early weeks of standard are extremely volatile. We have seen the top decks out of the gates become obsolete within a few weeks when the pros identify weaknesses in the strategy. Take Verder's Gearhulk for example. It had a low pre-selling point and did really well with the initial green-black aggro decks in week one, but its dominance was short-lived when the faster, more versatile vehicle decks became the aggro strategy of choice. By the time you blinked, Gearhulk was crashing in price. When Blue-White Flash started showing its dominance and was clear it was here to stay, we still had plenty of time to invest in those pieces and even more important, plenty of time to sell them and look for the best deal. So in conclusion, buying into the pre-order hype is just too volatile for my blood. There are much less risky and opportune times to invest in standard cards. So unless you absolutely need the cards for a deck, I suggest being patient and waiting until after the dust has settled. If you enjoy this topic of investing in Magic the Gathering cards, I suggest checking out the series on my YouTube channel called Market Mondays, where I give my thoughts on the current MTG market trends. Hope this helps. Back to you, Jeremy. Boy, that was pretty informative, I'd have to say. Um, I'm glad I asked Kevin to do that, and I am uh, thankful that he put the time and effort in. I'm going to put a link in the description below to check out Rogue Deck Builder, and uh, if you were entertained by his content, you should check it out. Um, I appreciate his insight as far as whether or not pre-ordering pre -ordering cards is a good idea. The one thing uh, I'm not sure he totally touched on that I thought... Um, was relevant was if you're a hyper competitive player and you absolutely have to have it Friday for FNM on release day and you aren't able to get it via trades leading up to it from people opening cards and pre release, pre ordering may be your only option. You need to weigh the value of even if you win that first week's pre release, uh, is it worth the value you're going to lose in all the higher prices you pay? when you pre-order the cards. There are sites like uh, where you can trade um, pre-release cards before the set is released. I think that's a good option to get cards by Friday. Trading with people at your pre-release is another good option, um, as well as checking out sites like eBay uh, because you can usually find cards and get them by Friday. Again, you wanna be careful in over-investing early in a pre-release or a pre-order scenario. I find this to be very true, especially with, and Doc agrees. Have you guys ever met Doc? Mm, Docky doodles. Look how happy he is. <laughs> um, you know, seal product, all this stuff. I think it, it's a little different than buying singles, but I hope that was helpful. And if it was, make sure you take a second to click that thumbs up button. Let Kevin know you appreciated his work and uh, him helping out the channel with some interesting knowledge. This is a big week. Lots of Aether Revolt hype to go. Booster boxes, fat packs, pre-release kits, everything. I've got it all. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.